happen. Deaf, dumb, and blind, they will not return to the path. I said, you see it, you utter it, you hear it, and you still don't catch it. He <laughs> said, so what are you talking about? You know, it's fun. Allah, it's fun. To do Allah's work, it's fun. It's a pleasant thing. You just do a little bit of homework. This little book here. Hmm. This little book here. The Muslim at prayer. I don't know whether it's available here in Dubai. Print it. I said, print it. The Muslim at prayer. It gives you all this. This little dynamite. All what I'm telling you, the quotations are here. This book won't teach you how to make salat. No, no, you have other books for that. This only teaches you everything that the Muslim does is in his book. Taking off the shoes. What the Quran says, what the Bible says. The Azan, what the Quran says, what the Bible says. Prayer. In the house of God, no idols, no images. What the Quran says, what the Bible says. Sujood, what the Quran says, what the Bible says. Wudu, what the Quran says, what the Bible says. Every aspect of Muslim prayer is to be found in his book. He is not aware of it. And we, as bad as we are, we are saying we are trying to follow in the footsteps of the prophets. But we are sitting on this knowledge. We are sitting on it. We don't share it. You see, the glory is in sharing. You know what you're doing to them? When you explain to them, when you are explaining to them these things, you know what is happening to them? When you see, they come along, salat times sometimes, salat times. And they sit at the back and they watch. And when we go into the sujood, you don't know what is going through their heart and mind. But there's nothing there, man. There's nothing there. And this man has bowed down to the ground. The impact that has upon the unbeliever. Impact. You don't know. But you want to keep him out. You don't want him to see. They are thinking that you're worshipping the idol of Muhammad inside the masjid. You know that? When they come inside, they look at the masjid, our masjid like yours, maybe a little more fancy than this masjid. See, a little more fancy. With the word Allah, Muhammad, and nice, some nice words say terrazzo, what do you call that? Nice, beautiful stones. Yes. So, they ask, we are your gods. Your gods. <laughs> yes. So we said, look, we have no idols and images here. They said, do you only take them out on Fridays? You know, for giving fresh air to your gods? Maybe you keep them away somewhere? They said, no, not even on Fridays. Because they see that our Muslims, we close our shops on Fridays between 12 and 1. So they said, maybe you take them out for fresh air, your gods, give them fresh air. They said, no, not even on Fridays. And they can't believe. They can't believe. And they're looking at me, they said, this guy is a Hindi, Indian. See? And now he's saying he hasn't got it. Something fishy. Two university students, they came along. Same type of, same question. Always, always the same type of questions. Where are your gods? So when it was finished, he said, what have you got on the top? We have a second floor. So he said, no, it's a hall like this. And on Fridays, the overflow of the congregation also goes to the top. So he said, can we have a look? I said, of course you can have a look. So all right, I took them to the top. They look around, it's simpler than at the bottom. He said, what have you got on the top? <laughs> he said, no, it's a flat roof, and twice a year during our festival Eids, the congregation also goes to the top. He said, can we have a look? He said, all right, nice, I've done, taken so much trouble, I might as well satisfy. Said, right, right to the roof. And from there, you can only see the rooftops of other buildings. So, they have a look around, there's nothing there to see. So they start walking down the steps, and one fellow tells the other, he says, you know, it's true, they have no idols here. They were searching them out. Maybe he says, you don't want to show them, you hit them away somewhere. They can't believe, because we didn't educate them. We didn't tell them anything. The fault is ours, it's not theirs. One English lady, during a, her world tour, to, she comes to the masjid with a group. And when the explanation is given about Islam, she said, I expected to find a funny oriental museum a la carte. But instead, I found the truth. What she meant was, I would have found in the mosque, she thought, a monkey got for Monday, elephant got for Tuesday, a snake got for Wednesday, all the gods lined up. That's what she expected. 
But instead she says, I found the truth. Another lady during the school holiday, she comes with the two daughters. The ruling race, the Africana, the ruling people. Supposed to be educated people, enlightened people. Yes, they come. They come to the mosque. And having a look around, she's disappointed. She's looking for something, it's not there. So she's asking, where are the cows? Cows, guy, kaha hai, guy, dhone ki. Bakara, bakara. So I'm asking, madam, have you lost your cows? <laughs> she says, no. No, I promised to show them to my daughters. I said, madam, you have come to the wrong place. So, but she said, I promised them. I said, madam, is that my fault? You promised to show cows in the mosque? I said, no, no. Well, I want to assure you. Look, you want to see cows? You can see them. They are not far from here, in Amgeni Road. You know, about two kilometers from there, there is a Hindu temple. They are my people. They look like me. We have the same surnames. We look alike. We speak the same language. Wallah, there's no, there's no exaggeration. They are my people. They look like me. And you'll find everything there. All that you're looking for, you'll find them there. But we are Muslims. We believe in Allah. We worship the unseen God of the universe, who is beyond the imagination of the mind of man. We know He exists. We know He's real. But He's not like anything we can think or imagine. That is God that we worship. And they ask endless questions. These are God-sent opportunities. They're asking questions. We want them to ask questions. That is how you educate people. They want to know about our women. You say in the mosque, prayer time, you say, no women. Don't women pray in Islam? I said, yes, they do pray. But he said, we don't see any. He says, no, there is what is called a segregation of the sexes. Men and women are not allowed to freely intermingle. So in the absence of a separate facility, they pray at home. But I said, you see there, the new structure going up? That is specially for ladies. They will be like in the mosque and yet out of the mosque. There is no free intermingling. Islam forbids free intermingling. You see, no Muslim has a right to be alone with a woman who is not his mother, his wife, his sister, his daughter. Anybody else? Respectable distance. I said, what Islam forbids is this free intermingling. I said, you see, you saw when you came in the place where we make the ablution. Now, the Muslim man and the woman, they both have to go through the same process. Same process. They must also take off the shoes. They must also make wudu. Everything the man does, the woman must do. But if they are together, side by side, then on the seats you saw, the man is sitting and the woman is sitting. The man is sitting and the woman is sitting. They're making ablution. They'll have to do. And there's a man sitting across. And this woman is washing her hands, her face, nape of the neck, her feet, lifting up her legs, washing her feet. And she may be wearing what they call a hot pant, hot pant, and there's a man sitting across, I says, you know, madam, you won't feel comfortable. Suppose you were that Muslim lady, you won't feel comfortable. And he agrees. And there's a man sitting on your right hand side, there's a man sitting on your left hand side. You won't feel comfortable. She agrees. They agree. I said, you see then, we are standing in a queue. Prayer time, behind every tap there are half a dozen people. Behind every tap. Prayer time, everybody, there's a rush. And I said, madam, let's say you are making the ablution and I'm waiting for my turn. I said, you know, while you're making that ablution, washing your hands, your feet, throwing your tresses around, making the massage. I said, you know, I won't be thinking of God. I'll be thinking of what lovely hands you got, what lovely arms. Look at the tresses, beautiful tresses. This is man, any man, unless he is a hypocrite or there's something else wrong with him. Man, woman, the thing that attracts man more than anything else on this earthly existence is a woman. And Allah tells you so. It says, Fear in the sight of men is the things, the love, the, the things they covet. And number one, min nisa wal banin wal kanati ril mukantarati min al zahabi wal fiddah. First one.